Once upon a time in a far, far galaxy, software tester meets data scientist. Hey, how are you? How's it going in your field? Oh, hi. Great, thanks. Data science is blooming and there is a good reason for it. We live in a data-rich world and there is a growing need to turn all this raw information into useful data. Oh, I'm glad for you. I'm not that well. Uh, don't have so much time for testing or for automation. Most of the day I spend for um, reports and writing matrices, which make me really bored. Oh, that's bad. Well, actually, quality assurance is one of the sectors that can immensely benefit from data science. Wait. Uh, exact Pro focuses on providing service in financial um, for financial institutions, not to Instagram filters business. Sorry, how can you how can you help us? What kind of problems do you have exactly? I may think of some solution. Okay, uh, will data say science analyze my defects better than me? Uh, well, if we use defect description as a data set, data scientists can calculate defect priority and the area of the testing that the defect belongs to. How will you understand from various description styles of QAs which defect is really crucial? Mm, well, we first transform text via natural language processing methodologies and then analyze how the user writes the description. This will allow us to evaluate what keyword leads to certain outputs. Still not convinced. What about the cases when even a tester doesn't understand whether it is an environment issue, a release issue or system issue? And from where on earth can you predict the resolution of the ticket if from time to time it depends on the phases of the moon? Well, humans is uh, certainly strongest competitor to statistics, but logs, dumps, and other files attached to defect makes them more transparent and easy to prioritize. Consequently, they will be fixed and resolved faster. That sounds interesting, but data science still can't replace QA. We feel where to find where to find bugs. Yeah, of course, but data science can help you predict where the bugs are present. You probably know about Pareto principle. Of course, according to this principle, there is an assumption that 80% of all bugs in the system are concentrated in 20% of the components. Yeah, right. Uh, by analyzing already known bugs, you can predict in which areas it is most likely to find new ones and also how critical they will be. Uh, an analysis of the documentation can also be useful for better understanding which functions are best to check first and where the most critical bugs may be. It's great, but if you follow the tips of algorithms, it's possible that in some areas there will be excessive tests or gaps where, while it is important to ensure correct coverage. Uh, I think you mentioned that you have lots of logs and traffic dumps, don't you? We can use the data to analyze coverage after the tests have been already completed. This will also serve as a backup check in case tests haven't been created correctly or they weren't, they were errors during execution. Also, if we observe systems in production, uh, data analysis, uh, analysis can be used to determine critical areas where more coverage may be needed. Also, we can possibly use clusterization for identifying different patterns in the system. And we can use these patterns as a basis for coverage criteria. And what about NFT testing? Such a huge amount of data has unbelievable human resource consumption from analysis point of view. Testing also includes inconsistent, missing, uh, duplicated information requires quick examination of data. Do you have some examples of applying data science here? Well, NFT is a big area actually where data science may be applied. Uh, for example, it is possible to analyze logs and show which errors are already detected and which errors are new. That sounds interesting. Will it estimate timelines and costs, predict number of issues that are going to be raised? Well, it's certainly possible, but why don't we discuss it some other time? Let's go, it's somewhere. I'm really hungry. Okay.
Okay.